Hello, and welcome to day two, Le Tour de France, Le Tour de Beer, day two. Yeah. You're correct. This is not beer. This is bourbon, because that's how crazy today's stage was, <laughs> let me tell you. And how crazy it was to be able to decide on what beer I want. So, uh, again, let's go into the quick. Uncle Frank, Team Beer Guts, and we're doing a different beer every single day of La Tour de France and talking about the beer, because that's what we do. We're Team Beer Guts. But because we're a cycling team that loves beer, we're also going to talk real quick about the race, and then we'll devil, del, bleh, delve into the beer. Uh, two, I try to do this in one take. So if I stumble over words, oh well. If the lighting is weird, oh well. I did notice that last video, so I'm also going to see if I can find a way to... It's not as bad. Hopefully it's not too distracting. And you can hang out. You know the best way to hang out? Grab a beer. Yes, that's right. Grab a beer and then hang out and listen to what it is I have to say. You're like, why do I want to listen to this guy talk about beer? Uh, well, I don't know. Whatever. Because talking about beer is fun. Yes, I'm a professional brewer. Yes, I'm a Cicerone by trade. I don't say that to impress you. I say that to impress upon you. It's about beer. So let's have some beer and let's have some fun. Now, those of you who just want to talk about the beer, great. You've probably found the link from us because I share my stuff through Facebook, through Twitter, uh, through Instagram, and it's some beer stuff. But it's also a little bit of bike things. So I got to throw a touch of the biking into it and then we're going to go right into the beer. But our channel is going to be mostly beer focused as well as the Instagram. But let's talk real quick about stage two. Tour de France. Two takeaways, real quick. One, Peter Sagan. Uh, I, I, I don't know what's going on with, with Peter. So stage one, I thought he was playing with Caleb Ewan. He was just right there. I felt like he could have taken over, but he didn't. Uh, and then towards the end of the stage, he didn't. I mean, at the end of the stage just played out completely differently. Uh, but I thought maybe he was the cat smacking the mouse. But today... Not so much, and Caleb Ewan was there again during the intermediate sprint. So, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Peter. I, I hope he's in full form. He looked great earlier this year. So, looking forward to Peter Sagan. I know I said two points is actually really three. Second point, which is kind of in between. Yesterday, I talked about the respect of the race. So, I guess now, Le Tour de France is looking for this person who stuck their sign out in the middle of the road to be able to get their selfie or their picture or whatever. Uh, there's been some really nasty, negative comments. I, we don't want that. We don't, to, we don't want to burn this person at the cross. We just need to make sure that, A, they know they made a mistake, and B, everyone else knows they made a mistake, so let's not do that. That type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Like... I have, I don't know, maybe six followers on this channel, but my hope is when I say, hey, spread the word, then someone else that has a podcast with a thousand followers and somebody else that has, whatever, 500 followers, they're like, hey, that's right, we should spread the word. And they spread the word. Maybe they spread my link and maybe we get some more traction or whatever. I, I, I just, it, it's not about me. It's never about me. It's about protecting the riders. So that's point two, and I, I hope that continues on from there and we can protect the peloton uh point three today's race matthew van de Poel. what a ballsy great move and you know what i don't do a lot of racing i, I don't do race analysis i race I, I watch to watch the races because it's fun uh and I saw him make the attack, and the announcers on the TV are like, oh, he'll never hold off this move. I'm like, he's not trying to hold off the move. He just wants to put some punishment on his opponents and gain some points, because you get time second bonuses. I knew this. How did they not know that? I, 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 I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, that's what he did. And then, on the second loop around, he did it again, and what a great great move by him and the reason i love college basketball is because of the raw emotion that is a, 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 by, by the players that's what we saw today there's a raw emotion because 
it was tied to his family. It was tied to what he was able to do. And getting to today's stage win uh, was absolutely amazing. And getting the yellow. So, uh, yeah, I might have spoiled it for a couple of people. Juliana Philippe, yeah, no longer in yellow. But that's what happens. So, uh, so now we go on to the beer. And how I came about today's uh, decision on the beer to drink. So I apologize if I went a little bit longer on the beer or the race recap review. But, hey, you know, whatever. I'm an amateur. That's what I do. So, the beer. How did I decide on today's beer? Because it was so unprecedented. Like, what do we do? Like, here's a guy that won the stage. His grandfather finished on the podium. Uh, won stages, but never wore yellow. Like, it's unprecedented. So let's have an unprecedented beer. Do I do tradition, like Pilsner? Do I, I, I don't know. So finally I said, I'm going to have a little whiskey, and then think about it. And what I ended up coming up with today was Smutty Nose, whole lot of Citra, double IPA. Smutty Nose, Legacy Brewery. We're talking Legacy. Double IPA, kind of newer style, newer guy. That's how we ended up pick, picking today's beer. So let's talk real quick about today's beer. This is the whole lot of Citra. Those of you who are fans of Smutty Nose know that there is a uh, whole lot of series. We did a whole lot of Simcoe, a whole lot of Lupulin, a whole lot of, it's, it's always been a different hop. Right now, next is coming up is whole lot of not going to tell you. That's right. you got to pay attention to find out what's coming next. As a brewer for Swanny Nose, I'm not going to give that to you. No, you got to pay attention to us. So make sure you follow Swanny Nose as well. That said, this is a whole lot of Citra. It is on the tail end of this particular series. So if you like Citra hops, go out and get it and get it right now. Because it's, it's as fresh as it's going to be. Uh, this is towards the last batch that we did. It's not like we did one batch and let it all run. We did a few batches of this. Make sure you get it. If you like Citra hops. And like me, so I like Citra. I never loved Citra hops. I'm going to try and get the camera here. Not messed up a little bit. There we go. I never loved Citra hops. And then I had a beer that was Citra hop forward, but it had another hop to it. And it made the Citra hop pop. A little bit more. That's the only way I can describe it. So if you can get a way for it to pop a little bit, that's what you want. Here, with a whole lot of series, at 7.8% alcohol, the alcohol is there. You need enough malt to be able to balance that out. So you, it's not sweet because it's malty, but the malt is there as the balance. And that allows whatever hop it is that we choose, especially with this one, Citra, to pop. Take a quick look at this. Getting close to my 10-minute mark here. I try to keep these under 10 minutes because I don't want to bore you guys. You know, if I go to 11, eh, whatever. Or then I have to throw in some type of uh, Spinal Tap reference, how it goes to 11. If I have to explain that to you, you probably don't want to follow this channel. Anyway, so, a <laughs> uh, whole lot of Citra. You can see the color here. Super golden, super clear. Not straw. Not straw like a Pilsner or a Hellas or some type of light lager. And yesterday we were talking about lagers. We are going deep into the ale right now. So this is made with an American ale strain. Uh, and double IPA, you might want to think what that means. Okay, is it double the alcohol, double the amount of hops, double the strength? It's up to the brewer. So this one is just like, hey, it's double IPA. IPAs were never always 7.8%. They were... Five to six? And so, granted, all right, six would double would be 12. You're not going to do that. That's a triple. It's big. But we want to double the amount of that and the hops that go with it. I will tell you, it's double the amount of work because this beer is a lot of work to get all the hops in and everything else to it. But it's worth it. Smell this beer. If you get one of these beers, smell it fresh. Like, as soon as you pop it in, ah. Uh, Super citrus, hence citra hops. It is citrus. There's some floral in there as well, which is one of the things I really dig about this beer. Uh, it is citrus, but it's not like grapefruit. Grapefruit can be very pithy, that 
white skin on the inside of grapefruit or orange. Citra hops are not that. And this is 100% citra hops, by the way, if you're, if you're curious. So it's citra hops, it's citrus, but also a little bit of sweet that's going on there. Slight haze to it, as you can see, as it matches the color of my shirt. You cannot see through the beer to get to my shirt. If you're wondering what this mullet shirt is about, I'll explain that at another time. It is very strange, but I enjoy it. Anyway, uh, it is the same color as my mullet shirt. It, you can't see through it, but it's not turbid. It's not like a cloud. It is just hazy. Uh, that straw color, straw to yellowish. Again... Pink grapefruit is one of the things that I always pick up out of this when it's done really, really well. Flavor-wise, man, there's a great crisp tang to it, as well as malt. There has to be malt. At 7.8%, there's got to be malt. If there's no malt, it's all hops, and all hops is bitter, and bitter and punch you in the face. And people are like, oh, I love hops! No, no, you love hop balance. You should love hop balance. So there's a hop balance that goes with this beer. And uh, there's that malty sweetness that goes with it, but it's not overcoming with a little bit of straw and a little bit of hay that's on the back end that allows the hops to be able to shine through. Let's go Cicerone. Let's go Geek. What am I going to put a double IPA with? A, depends on the 